back to Kid TV. Char. Hello. For today's video, as you can see on the title, macho seryoso ang ating ganap today. Ang lamig ng aircon, God say. Pero okay lang yan. But, ayan, teka lang, mag-iwan ako ng space dito para may text tayo dyan kung kakayanin sa editing. But whatever, there is a text, there is a space for the text. Anyway, for today's video, medyo seryoso ang ating ganap because I promised you guys that I'll share with you the things that I learned this year. Char! 19 things to be exact. Nakikita niya naman sa title. And wala lang, I must say that this year is really medyo malala itong taon na ito. And I must say, this year was filled with so much hard Ships and heartaches. But I must say naman, with pain and all, is there's always a learning. Bago pala ang lahat, Happy New Year, Anes. Mag New New Year na. May belated Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. By the time that you're watching this, maya-maya lang eh, bagong taon na. So, ihabol natin tong video na ito bago matapos ang taon. So, kung bago ka lang dito sa channel ko, my name is Kit. Welcome to my channel. Sana mag-subscribe ka na kasi limang libo na lang eh, maaabot na natin ang 100,000. So, subscribe mo na yan. Click the notification bell button below para notified ka pag may bago akong upload. And ayun, umpisa na natin kasi medyo marami ito. 19 things ito na natutunan ko ngayong taon. Kung kayo rin pala, kung may natutunan kayo or may na-realize kayo ngayong taon, eh, i-comment nyo yan sa baba. Let this video be a learning process for each one of us. So, ayun. Isa muna malaking disclaimer. Yung mga natutunan ko ay maaaring natutunan nyo na. Noong 20, 2009, 2010, late bloomer siguro ako, kaya ngayon ko lang natutunan to. Kaya ganon. So, wala, walang husgahan ng mga learnings, okay? Let this be a space for no judgments. Ika nga nila. Okay, umpisahan na natin sa unang-una, okay? Siguro, one thing that 2019 taught me is that moving on is not linear. Ano ibig sabihin ko dito? Minsan, nakala mo yung moving on mo, yung proseso mo na pag-move on nasa 80% na, pero may mangyayaring hindi maganda na magbabalik sa'yo sa 20% at okay lang yun. Kumbaga, moving on ay hindi yan parang step by step process that will guarantee you na pag ginawa mo yung mga ganitong bagay automatically parang progressive ang iyong moving on. Minsan talaga eh, nakamove on ka na ng 50% pero malalaman mo for example, pinagpalit ka so babalik ka na naman ng mga 10% or like back to 0% ka at okay lang yon We all have our moving on process. Kaya speaking of moving on process ang learning number 2 ko ay moving on does not have a uniform timeline. Parang ang talino ng vibes ko doon. Pero, yun nga, moving on does not have a uniform timeline. Meaning, walang mathematical equation ang pag-move on. Hindi yan parang guaranteed dapat after 3 months, 4 months, 5 months, 6 months, 1 year, naka-move on ka na. Ang pag-move on na hindi pare-parehas sa labawa tao, walang walang nagsasabi na dapat maka-move on ka na in 7 days, in 10 days, in 11 days, yung ganon. Hindi yan uniform. So, may kanya-kanya tayong pag-move move on, Beshi. Which leads me to my third learning. If you're the ex na naunahang magpalit or in other words, ikaw yung pinagpalit, eh okay lang maging better. Parte talaga ng proseso ng pag-move on ang pagiging better. At sabi ko naman sa inyo, moving on is not linear. So maaaring during the process of moving on, feeling mo 80% na yung pag-move on mo hanggat sa nalaman mo na may bago na yung ex mo kaya bumalik ka ng 20% and that's okay. Pero ito ang mahalagang natutunan ko this year. Kung naunahan ka ng ex mo, magkabago. Never, ever take it against your ex. Feeling ko, automatic sa atin pag nasaktan or naiwanan or napagpalit. Automatically natin tinitake against our ex yung kanyang happiness. Kung baga, bakit parang kasalanan niya pang pinili niyang maging masaya? ba? And this year, I learned na kung pinagpalit man ako ng ex ko, eh dapat hindi ko yun i-take against sa kanya. Dahil in relation to learning number three, it doesn't mean nakapalit palit ka sis. Fourth learning is the world does not revolve around you mga besh. In other words, hindi umiikot ang mundo ng ex mo sa'yo. Kung pinagpalit ka kaagad, detach yourself dun sa idea na ikaw yung may kasalanan, ikaw yung nagkulang, or ikaw yung paangit. Detach yourself sa idea na parte ka pa rin ng decision making ng ex mo. Well, in general, at least try to detach yourself from your ex. Period. Kasi wala na nga kayo, ba? I mean, alam alam ko mahirap kasi lagi nating tinitingnan yung relationship natin with our ex 
legs. As if, parang may utang siya sa'yo, lalo na kapag iniwan ka. Which for me, yun, wag. Wag yung titignan na gano'n, na parang may utang na loob, na parang, sino bang magkasabi kung kailan siya dapat magkabago, ba? Diba? Wala namang dapat magdikta nun. Kaya ka lang nasasaktan, eh, kasi bitter ka na naunahan ka. Gusto ko lang reiterate, guys, na pag tayo iniwanan, or pag tayo nagkaroon ng failed relationship, I think magandang practice na pag tapos na, tapos na, wag nating ikulong yung sarili natin sa relationship. Lalo na't alam mong nagkabago yung ex mo, wag mong ikulong yung sarili mo sa relasyon nyo knowing na wala na. Yun lang naman yun. Fifth learning is, eto talaga ang amazing this year, is dating apps. Yes, dating apps, whether it's Tinder, Bumble, and everything in between, can bring you to meeting different types of people. To be honest, guys, ha, I used to be iffy and judgy sa mga tao na gumagamit ng dating apps. But who can blame me? I mean, guys, I was in a relationship or I was committed no mga panahong na uso yung Tinder na yan, na uso yung mga Bumble, Bumble na yan. So, for me, siguro naging automatic reaction ko to dating apps is ganon. Parang, ha? Bakit? Ba't, ka, ba't ganon? Ba't kailangan mo gumamit ng app para magka-love life? Ganon. Call me late bloomer or whatever. Pero I'm happy I took a chance in using dating apps this year. Tsaka! Dating apps this year. Not in a malandi way. Hindi na ba sa pagiging malandi? Or sige, dagdag nyo na na medyo malandi ka talaga sis. Pero, ewan ko ha. Ang rewarding nung paggamit ng dating apps. Hindi na parang, hindi sa paraan na parang you're looking for validation through the dating apps. Kung baga yung pag naswipe right ka or nagmatch kayo, hindi sa ganon. Pero it's just that, personally, after the breakup, I felt like my circle was so small. Almost as if I'm in a box. Kaya parang ang rewarding for me ng dating apps kasi somehow it broadens my circle as in ang dami kong nakilala all walks of life. Ang dami kong nakilala through the dating app na hindi naman intentionally para lumandi ka. It's just that to meet new people lang talaga. And ayun, ang amazing lang ng dating apps. Ngayon ko lang siya na-appreciate. And it's one learning for me. Hindi ko alam kung mababaw para sa iba. Pero late bloomer nga siguro ako. Kaya late ko lang or this year ko lang na-appreciate ang dating apps. <laughs> May iba tayo but sixth learning ko is in a year, notice the people who stayed. Notice those who joined you in your journey of healing and freedom. Notice the people who did not leave your side. Because my sixth learning is minsan talaga, not because you're always there for them, doesn't mean they are there for you. And it sucks. Sobrang shit. Diba? Parang, especially if you have a friend whom you would always 100% anjan ka talaga, pero only to expect sa dulo pag ikaw na yung nangailangan, wala na sila. But that's the reality. Kung alam ko lang yung idea na parang hindi lahat ng taong nandyan ka palagi eh nandyan para sa'yo, kung natutunan ko lang yun sooner, then maybe I could have lessened my expectations. Ewan ko, kasi parang mas lalo kang dudurugin nung idea na yun eh, diba? Kung nalaman ko lang, eh di sana nag-lessen ako ng expectations. Kasi alam nyo yung mga expectations na yan, yung tipong heartbroken ka na nga, tas masasaktan ka pa na hindi ka pwedeng tumakbo sa mga mga taong akala mong pwede kang mag-depend on. Pero okay lang yon. I mean, hindi yun with bitterness, ha? I think that's just how some relationships work. Never expect na lang talaga. Alam mo ko, mahirap. Especially when we build relationships, we try to be there for the people we truly love. Pero, ang ego lang ng feeling na pag na, pag ikaw na yung ego, wala nang tao dyan sa paligid mo. And it sucks especially na alam mo na nung mga panahong sila yung ego, ikaw yung laging nandyan. Like, I think parte ng learning ko dun sa sex learning ko is, don't compare what you can give to what you will receive. Siguro, let's put it that way. But, whatever, that's okay. That's how life works. <laughs> We're way past that because next learning is, seventh, some people are meant to pass by in your life. Not for them to stay, but to leave you a lesson. And most of the time, that lesson comes with pain. Eighth learning naman is, sometimes friends grow apart and it's okay. <laughs> Lahat ata ng learning ko sa 20 2019 is, is it's okay talaga. Everything is okay. Yes, the idea of you losing them will hurt you or the idea that you are no longer needed will hurt you. But that's the reality eh. In a year, you'll grow apart with some friends but you'll also meet new friends. Which leads me to my ninth learning which is 
best friendship is not necessarily built on the length of your relationship or kung gaano na kayo katagal magkaibigan. Minsan, kahit kakakilala nyo lang, you'll realize na ito na yung taong isa sa mga gusto mong makasama habang buhay. Or ito na yung taong dadagdag sa collection mo ng best friends. Kaya I feel like in a year, it's really impossible na puro ka lang nawalan. Pakiramdam ko, parte na ng buhay ang mawalan at mag-gain. You lose some, you win some. Ika nga nila, ba? Diba? Tense learning ko naman is, sometimes alam na natin na ang best advice or the best thing to do is leave the situation. But one thing I learned this year is that kahit ilang beses tayo sabihan ng mga kaibigan natin na tama na, bitawan mo na, umalis ka na, awit sis, hindi natin gagawin until we're ready. Malaman mong ready ka na kapag gigising ka na lang one day at marirealize mo na you are done and you are finally ready to leave. Totoo yun guys. Kaya minsan yung mga barkada mo napapagod sa'yo sabihin na alam mo naman na yung dapat gawin eh pero as long as you're not ready to do so hindi mo gagawin. Magiging marupo ka pa rin. Marupo ka pa rin sa parehang sitwasyon hanggat hindi mapakayang bitawan. Eto, something I also learned this year is alam ko na kung bakit mahirap matulog mga besh. Eto rin ata yung taon na may pinakakonti akong tulog as in mabibilang ko siguro kung ilang araw lang ako natulog ng mahimbing. Pero this year was really filled with sleepless nights talaga. At ngayong taon, natutunan ko na it's hard to sleep because sleep requires peace. Hirap tayong matulog kasi hindi tayo payapa. Maraming tumatakbo sa isip natin. Kaya ang masasuggest ko sa'yo, if you find yourself in the middle of the night unable to sleep, rest your mind and pray. Okay, isa pang natutunan ko is nung bata tayo, lagi tayong sinasabihin na wag umiyak. Pero sinasabi ko sa inyo, mga kapatid, go lang best umiyak kayo. Because crying helps, mga kapatid. It, just ko, crying helps. May time this year na I was in a dark place. At just ko naman, grabe naman yung dark place na yon Dahil ultimo best friend ko ay nasa dark place din. So, kumbaga, ang hirap humanap ng light sa tunnel, mga besh. Kasi ultimo best friend mo, eh, may sabit din, no? So, ang ginawa namin dalawa, eh, isang buong gabi na nood kami ng mga nakakaiyak hanggat maubos yung iyak namin. At posible pala yon Posible palang maubos yung iyak mo, yung hindi ka na makaiyak. Pagising namin, sobrang gumaan yung pakiramdam namin. So, mga besh, iyak. Go lang, besh. Iyak mo yan. Number 13. Okay. My friends would always ask me kung papaano ko kinayang magmahal uli. And to be honest, I remember asking the same question to my ex. Pero, finally, ang sarap sa pakiramdam na kaya ko na rin sagutin yun. Kinaya ko magmahal uli dahil binago ko yung mindset ko. Na kung yung noon, ang mindset ko ay ayoko nang masaktan uli. Binago ko siya at ginawa ko siyang gusto ko na ulit maramdamang magmahal at mahalin. In relation to my first to fourth learning, pag yung ex nyo kinaya na ulit magmahal ng iba, maging proud kayo sa kanila kasi hindi sila na-stuck or nakahon sa ideya na nakakatakot magmahal ulit. Kasi it takes a lot of courage to love. And wag mong i-take against your ex na kinaya niyang magmahal ulit. Because maniwala ka na it took her so much courage din para maniwala ulit sa love. Nagkataon lang na una siyang maniwala sa'yo pero hindi naman paunahan to, di ba? Fourteenth learning is is that when your self-love is slow, you settle for temporary feelings and attractions. Mas madali ma-recognize and ma-appreciate yung mga pucho-puchong attraction from other people dahil hindi mo yun mabigay sa sarili mo. Kaya kahit hindi sapat, kaya kahit hindi yun yung deserve mo, tinatanggap mo kasi feeling mo at least meron ka. And Beshi, ako na magsasabi sa'yo na ikaw, bilang tao, bilang babae, o bilang kung ano, hindi ka pang at least Hindi ka pa ang ox na to. Kaya 15th learning is never ever pressure yourself in committing to people just because you're afraid to lose them. Especially ah, yeah, especially if you feel like you're just settling. Just settling, ito yung mga attraction na hindi naman talaga 100%, pero dahil yan yung nandyan, ayaw mo na pakawalan kasi baka mawalan ka. Let me tell you that if you commit sa ganyang klaseng relasyon, it is bound to fail. Selfishness yan, masasabi sabi ko talagang 
selfishness yan because you are not after loving her forever. You are just after doon sa feeling na binibigay niya sa'yo. Sa feeling na may attracted sa'yo. Sa feeling na parang, ah, okay, sa mata niya, ang ganda mo. It is bound to fail because once you receive the same attraction to other people, masasaktan mo siya. And I must admit, naging selfish din ako this year. I wouldn't learn that learning kung hindi ako naging selfish ngayong taon. Pero ito, katangahan ko na to. Kaya next learning ko is never allow yourself na mas stop sa mga taong hindi ka naman kayang mahalin. Kaya mas okay talaga kapag hindi paasa yung mga crush nyo eh. Kasi mas madali mag-move on. Okay din kapag yung crush mo rektahang sasabihin ko hanggang saan ka lang para alam mo kung hanggang saan ka lang. Kaya again, mga sis, never allow yourself to be stuck sa mga taong hindi ka naman kayang mahalin at huwag mo rin ipagpipilitan yung sarili mo sa mga taong hindi ka naman kayang tanggapin. Magkadugtong yun. Okay, malapit na tayong matapos dahil we are down to the third to the last learning at yun na nga ang hindi mahalaga kung ilang beses kang madapa. Bangon ka lang palagi hanggang mahanap mo yung momentum mo. This year, I might say na nawala talaga ako sa We Show, especially here on YouTube. Pero nangyari na, kaya sobrang happy ko na na-accomplish ko yung vlogmas. Although, sa huli pa tayo pumalya, pero at least may upload tayo, ba? Diba? At slowly, I'm back on my feet and expect na pagpapatuloy ko to in the next coming year. And I must give credit to El kasi sinabi ko na to lagi sa video ko kasi isa rin naman talaga siya sa mga tao. Tumulong sa akin to get back on my feet and to successfully accomplish our vlogmas. Siya talaga yung naging pushing, pushing power ko. Ano pushing power? And kaya ikaw, kung pakiramdam mo yung taon mo, puro ka na lang na pa. Huwag ka mapagod bumangon kasi yung bangon mo pwede nang lakad yan hanggang sa takbo na yan. Hanggang sa makakatakbo ka na uli. Hanggang sa mafe-feel mo na kaya mo na ulit. At napaka-rewarding nung feeling na yon Kapag shitty yung taon mo pero sa dulo, tinakbo mo. Alam mo yun? Ay, hindi, hindi ko alam kung nagbe-make sense ako pero ayun. <laughs> Second to the last learning is this year I learned about mood tracker and it helps. Sobrang helpful niya in terms of reflection and self-awareness. If you've watched my What's on my iPhone 2019, shinare ko dun yung mga mood trackers ko and ang napili kong ang app or yung talagang ginagamit kong app ngayon is Dailyo. So among the mood trackers that I downloaded, si Dailyo lang talaga yung nagtagal sa akin and I must say na sobrang efficient niya and sobrang helpful niya because instead of ranting on Twitter, ginagamit ko yung Dailyo to record my moods and emotions at nakakatulong yun to avoid spreading negativity. Although yes, gets ko naman, Twitter mo naman yan, you can do whatever you want, you can type whatever you want on Twitter, pero feeling ko by using Dailyo or yung mood trackers, nakakaambag ako sa kapayapaan ng mundo. Ewan ko ah, parang feeling ko nagkakaambag ako sa kapayapaan by not posting may kakalatan online, gets ba? Ayun, and sana kayo din explore Dailyo or explore mood trackers that would help you regulate or record your moods and emotions and sa end of the year, tingnan mo yung mga in-entry mo doon, sobrang ganda or rewarding kasi makikita mo na o teka lang, patapos na yung taon pero yung mood count ko, mas marami yung bad kasi sa good, ba diba? Parang at the end of the year, nagiging aware ka sa kung paano mo inilugar yung sarili mo despite all the hardships, ganon. So, yun lang, download it, hindi po ito sponsor kung sana lang po mar malaman ni Dailyo na pinopromote ko yung app niya. Kunin niya na po akong ambassador. Pero ayun! And lastly, we are down to my last learning. Ito na yung pinaka-simple, pero ito talaga yung pinaka-learning ko this year. And that is, kaya ko pala. I learned this year that I can still film, that I can restart, that I can find things that would make me happy. I learned this year na I can go back to writing songs. I learned this year that I have the power to influence or to inspire other people. I learned this year that I can love again. And pinaka-importante doon is this year I learned that I can welcome a new year despite all the hardships and the heartaches I faced this year. Kaya to each one of you, make it a goal na kayanin nyo each year. Kaya ayun! Sobrang grabe. I must say na marami pa ako natutunan this year and yung iba doon, hindi ko siguro maput into words. Pero thank you so much if you have made it to this part of the video. Again, huwag nyo kalimutan mag-subscribe. Happy, happy new year and magkita-kita tayo next year. <laughs> Sana nandito ka pa rin next year. And it has been a rough 2019 and a rewarding 2019 sa dulo. Ah, uh, 
At lagi nyo tatandaan na every year pass by. Kung pangit yung naging taon nyo, expect nyo or ipray nyo or gawin yung better yung darating na taon. So, ayun lamang po. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I know this is quite long and maaaring may ibang learning dito na hindi kayo sang ayan. Maybe it's just another learning for me in 2020 na may mga mali akong learnings this year. Pero comment nyo rin sa baba kung ano yung mga natutunan nyo this year and also comment nyo na rin kung ano yung mga video suggestions nyo for the year 2020. Bumalik tayo on track. Thank you so much and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!